friends, my name is Aditya and I'm in fourth grade. This is the science experiment that I did this year. It is, which material is the best conductor of electricity? And, and, and for that you need, for that you need a bulb, a battery holder, which consists of four 1.5 bat volt batteries, and I are double A, and I already put them in, and this, and you need, and that battery holder should have an off on and off switch, which will help the circuit later, and it should have two wires connected to connect the circuit curve carefully. This is actually a six volt bulb. The reason why is because 1.5 times four is all together equal to six, so it has to be equal to the bulb. And this is a six volt bulb holder, which it's best if it has screws to connect the circuit. And this is another, this is a connecting wire, which is not originally connected to anything, but it helps the circuit go. And as you can see, I taped it to something so that it's easier for when I put it on, it, it works. And to see if your, if your circuit is actually closed, Put it on and put one of your test materials that you have and that you, you would need and put it on and if, it, if the bulb grows your circuit is good. And these are the test materials that you can use. And you can use any test material you want and then um, just just make sure it's a conductor. And this is, and the, the test materials I'm going to use is silver, copper, Lead, which is made of carbon, and graphite lead, which is made of carbon. And in normal times, like olden days, it was actually called lead. And in the olden days, when people touched it, they got diseases and some of them died. So they uh, they took lead and they mixed graphite to it, which made it graphite lead, which is actually non-toxic. This is an iron nail, and this is aluminum foil. And to start with, to start with, you should make the circuit. Mm -hmm. And to make it easier, you can tape it to somewhere so that you can just, you, all you have to do is place it down so that the bulb will go. So then first, take your batteries and keep it to on. Then set up, then keep it like this. Now take one of your test materials and put it on, put it on the circuit and um it might take a while sometimes just for it to work so be patient with it Ma. Mama. Okay, I guess this isn't working right now. Here, I'll just take a little bit of foil. Okay, if it's glowing, then it's the circuit's working. And to test which how much brightness it has, you need to use a brightness meter. And how to use the brightness meter? Then you first you have to make it. So you how to make the brightness meter is take a normal A4 size paper, which is letter size in eight by eleven. Then cut it into 10 equal strips. And then take the first strip and cut it so that there's only two centimeters left. Take the, take the second strip and add two more centimeters to the, to the last bit of it. Then add two centimeters to each one until you have 10 strips, which it starts from the shortest to the longest. Stack them up from shortest to the longest. So short, 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 and then long. Longest piece should be on the bottom and then it should go like that until you have the shortest on the top. Then staple them. Two staples would be good for accuracy. And label the first strip, which is the shortest strip, number 10. Then go that, go do that, and label, label it going down until you get to one, the longest strip. And how to use a brightness meter? Well, when it's glowing, of course, then first put it on put it on top. You have to put it on top and first put it on top of number 10. So see if it goes through 10 layers of paper. And for instance, if it goes through six layers of paper, if it can't go through seven layers of paper but goes through six layers, then it would be the measurement and the brightness would be six. 
And as you can see, my hypothesis is that if we pass electricity through different conductors, then silver will conduct the most electricity. Because silver has so much free electrons that will go through and create more electric current, and the bulb will shine the brightness due to the easy flow of electric current. And the materials you need, of course, test materials and everything. Now, the variable, the independent variable is the type of test material used. And the dependent variable is the brightness of each test material. And you'll need to make a graph, which is brightness versus test material. You put the test material on the bottom for the x-axis, and for the y-axis will be the brightness. So now, the result, after the result, now I'll present the result. After setting up the conductivity apparatus as shown in PIC 1, the degree of conductivity of each test material was experimented three times. And as you can see, silver got the most. The result is shown in graph A. And as you can see, silver got the most, which is seven. And um, see, and then I, uh, I got the first one seven, then six seven, and since I took the most occurring, it was seven, and the the second one was copper with five with six. Then after that, it it, it was aluminum with a brightness of five, and then after that it was iron with a brightness of four, and finally with only a little spark was graphite lead. And as you can see, even in the picture, you can see that graphite lead only brought a spark, but silver brought the whole room to a light. So as you can see, if I put silver here, it will bright as big as a star. But if I bring graphite, it only gives a little spark. And be patient with graphite, because graphite is only very small, and it takes some time. So graphite can only bring a little spark. You have to be patient with it. As you can see, graphite lead is only bringing a little spark enough to, to light the filament. And the, uh, if we pass electricity through different conductors, then silver will conduct the most electricity. My hypothesis was supported because when current was passed through the test material silver, the bulb showed the most brightness of seven compared to the other test materials. The scientific fact I learned from this experiment is that all conductive materials do not have the same amount, the same amount of conductivity. And every test material and everything you see around here consists of atoms. And atoms is made out of a nucleus, neutrons, protons, and electrons. This is an atom, an atom, an atom is held together by the forces of attraction between the electrons and protons. So conductivity is determined by the types of atoms in a material and how atoms are linked together with one another. Atoms, this big black dot in the middle is called the nucleus. And the nucleus is made out of neutrons and protons. And these big circles are actually called shells. And these red dots are orbiting, these red dots are orbiting the nucleus and they're called electrons and they're, they're light weighted and they're, they consist of negative, negative volt electricity. And this last, last orbit shell you can see is called the valence shell. The valence shell, the, so valence shell will have some electrons for conductors. The conductor atoms are made of, that made of, the lab, conductor atoms have a valence shell, but usually insulators don't. And the electrons in conductors, in the, in the valence shell of conductors, are called free electrons. And free electrons are very loosely bound from their nucleus that 
they don't attract to it. But when an adjacent atom comes by, they, they, they just go away. That's why they're called free electrons. But for instance, if the electrons are very bound with the nucleus, they're called insulators. But that's a whole other thing. And concluding, thus concluding the materials with the most number of free electrons are the, have the better conductivity. Like silver had the most number of free electrons in its atoms, uh, uh, unlike copper, lead, aluminum, and iron. Bye friends, I hope you liked the video. I Rate it if you like it. Bye.